Welcome to the Living the Dream Podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball Podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. And today, we're going to be talking about abundance as I am joined by author, podcaster, and life coach, Rebecca Whitman. Rebecca was selected as Life Coach of the Year by the International Association of Top Professionals, and her philosophy divides life into seven pillars of abundance. So we're going to be talking to her about what that means and about those pillars of abundance. So Rebecca, thank you so much for joining me today. You are so welcome, Curtis. It's great to be here. Why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Yes, I am a success mentor. And I also host a podcast called The Balance, Beautiful and Abundant Show. And it all, all this life coaching and inspirational work started a few years ago. My dad was dying as my marriage was unraveling and it was a really hard year. And in the last conversation I had with my dad, he asked me to write something and I didn't know what I was going to write, but I really believe the universe speaks through people. So the marriage ended on a Friday, two days before that was my dad's funeral. And I was sitting in my financial planner's office and workout clothes. And he said, Rebecca, I'm looking at your portfolio and you're having your best fiscal year ever. You're actually worth over a million dollars, but yet you lost your dad and your marriage. How can you function? And I said, because I live my life in seven pillars of abundance And he said, why don't you write a book and inspire women and teach them to do what you're doing so that they can be so resilient when life happens, which life happens if something terrible happens, like a loss of a marriage or a beloved family member, they can still stay abundant and high functioning. And I said, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I wrote a book. It's called How to Make a Six-Figure Income Working Part-Time. And in that book, I go into these seven pillars of abundance and they're like seven spokes on a bicycle wheel. If you have all seven pillars of abundance at a level 10 or as close to it as you can get, then you can, you can manifest whatever you want, Curtis, whether that's being in great shape, finding your soulmate, having a great group of friends and just being happy. That's, that's a true goal of living an abundant life is to be happy. So explain to the listeners what a success mentor is. Sure. A mentor, in my opinion, is a little different than a coach because a coach is, you know, coaching from the sidelines. A mentor is someone who actually achieved what it is you're trying to achieve and they're showing you how to do it. So I believe to find success, it's really simple, Curtis. All you have to do is find somebody who has what you want. And if you do what they did, you can get what they got. And that's exactly what I teach women to do. I was just like them. I was jaded, cynical, burned out, couldn't find love, couldn't lose those last 10 pounds. And I figured out a way to do it. And now I'm teaching women in groups and one-on-one coaching and in retreats, how to achieve their goals in life. So explain to people what the seven pillars of, of abundance are and, you know, kind of give a, give us a brief description of them. I would love to. So the seven pillars of abundance are in order of importance. The first one is spirituality. And that is the most important thing because having a connection with a power greater than yourself, I choose to call that power. God, it can be whatever you want it to be. The universe, uh, Jesus, Allah, Buddha, doesn't matter as long as nature, as long as it's a power greater than yourself. And I believe it's really important to start your day with a morning practice so you can get tuned into that power and that fuel, that spirituality carries you through your day. The second pillar is fitness. So I believe that we should schedule our life around our workout. Health is wealth and health is our number one resource. And that is why it takes precedence over everything. So whatever your schedule is, I know people who wake up at four in the morning to work out or they do it on their lunch break, make sure you're getting that fitness in. The third pillar is emotions. 
So all emotions come from two basic emotions, fear and love. So all the negative emotions, resentment, bitterness, jealousy, hatred, bigotry, everything, anger, it's all coming from fear. And all the positive emotions, bliss, happiness, compassion, collaborating, everything good, appreciation, gratitude, they all come from love. So what I teach my clients is to shift your mindset from the fear vibration to the love vibration. And that's what we talk about in emotions. The next one is romance. So it's really important to do your emotional work before the romance because you attract who you are, not who you want. So if you're negative, cynical, and bitter, and jealous, and you're going to attract someone who's just like that. So if you work on your emotional state and you learn to come from love, not fear, you can attract a healthy relationship. And that's what's happened to me for the first time in my life. After doing this work, I finally am in a healthy relationship with the love of my life. And we just got married seven months ago. So I'm actually doing this work too. The next one after romance is mindset. So people who are listening to this wonderful show, you're working on your mindset. We're in the golden age of personal growth. There's so much content out there on YouTube, on podcasts, there's clubhouse. There's just so many personal growth books available. Audible has a a lot of great personal growth authors. It's just, there's endless ways to work on your mindset. So I like to teach my clients in the nooks and crannies of your life while you're driving, while you're doing household chores, while you're getting ready for work, go ahead and listen to something that is going to pour into you and enhance your mindset so you can start creating the life that you want. The next pillar is social. I like to say that your vibe attracts your tribe and community creates immunity. So if you have a group of people that believe in you, that support you, that are cheering you on, that are just saying, you can do it, you can do it, keep going, you're going to be a lot more likely to reach your goals. And if you have people around you going, oh, that's never going to happen, you know, get your, you're in the, your head is in the sky, that's a pipe dream. So we want to be around people who believe in us and who support us. And finally, people always think it's first, but last pillar of abundance to come into alignment is finances. Curtis, people think finances are first. So like I'll work, 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 I'll make money, then I'll hire a personal trainer and then I'll get in shape. Then I'll look great and meet the love of my life. Then we'll socialize with other fabulous people and then we'll do spirituality. We'll go to a yoga retreat or something, but it's the total opposite. Once you get all the other six pillars of life in alignment, the money will come a lot more easily. Of course, you still have to work. You don't just sit at home on a meditation you know, cushion and say, kumbaya, you still work, you still take action, you still go for it, but things come to you a lot faster when you're in alignment, when you're in flow and when you're high vibe. Well, congratulations on being a newlywed. Thank you. Thank you so much. Are you married? I am not currently. Okay. Have you been? No, I've never been married. Oh, okay. Well, this this is my second time at the rodeo. So I'm feeling very optimistic this time. Absolutely. Well, congratulations. Talk about the importance of a morning practice. Yes. As I was saying with spirituality, how you start your day determines the type of day that you have. And there is a compound effect. So let's say you start the day, as they say, you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, right? Your alarm goes off. You don't hear it. You're running late. You spill your coffee. You know, you don't have time to walk the dog. So, you know, the dog is going to go to the bathroom inside. The kids are late for school. So you're yelling at the kids and then you hit traffic and then someone cuts you off and you scream. Then the kids are late. So the negativity compounds, but so does the positivity. So having a morning practice gives yourself a chance to have the best day possible. You are controlling your thoughts. So if you wake up with fear or negativity, you're actually deliberately changing from the fear channel to the love channel. I like journaling. I actually have an incredible journal that I want to share with your listeners. And I've been doing this journal for 20 years, maybe more. And this journal helps you change your perspective when something negative happens. There's always a blessing in the mess. It helps you see the positivity in your life. And I like to call this my abundance journal. So I believe so strongly in journaling. 
meditation. You can do something just to set the tone, like light a candle or light incense. I like to have crystals around. Music is very helpful. Just having a certain part of your house that is just set aside for your morning ritual, it makes it really special. I like having something hot to drink, either tea or coffee, and just really getting into it, just really centering myself, writing down my affirmations, thinking what I want to create that day, and really setting the tone for my day. And the days that I do my morning practice, it's amazing. They just flow and everything just kind of works together. And when I don't do my morning practice, things go a little bit slower, but I learn if I don't have time to do it in the morning, Curtis, I don't beat myself up. I'll just make time later that day to do my morning practice. So even if I get it in at lunch, it's better than not doing it at all. Absolutely. Well, you have a saying that says self-care is not selfish. So explain to people why you came up with that and what you mean by that. Yeah. Self-care is how we are able to achieve in life because especially as women, we're taught to put everyone first, right? Put the the husband and the kids and, and the dog and our friends and all our family members first. And if we say, nope, I can't do that. I'm going to the gym or no, I can't do that. I'm going to get a massage. They're like, oh my God, she's so selfish. She's not even there for her family. So teaching women, especially, but women and men, that self-care isn't selfish is so important because our being is like a cup of tea. And if we're depleted, if we're exhausted and drained, yay, we may be showing up for the recital or the baseball game or showing up on that date. But if we're completely exhausted, we're not going to be our best selves. We're not going to be funny and charming and entertaining and lovely to be around because we're going to be exhausted. We're going to be like, oh my God, I just want to go to bed. But if we fill our cup up first with self-care, Whatever that looks like to you, it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. It could be stretching. It could be, uh, there's tons of great yoga videos on YouTube. It could be a bubble bath. It could be just walking in nature. And of course, the morning practice with prayer, meditation, and journaling. When we're filled up and we feel good and positive and like we are excited to go to that event or show up on that date or go to that game, then we're going to be there and we're going to actually show up in our best self. So we have something to give. We're pouring from a full cup. So that's why I like to say, Curtis, that self-care isn't selfish because we have got to take care of ourselves first, or we're going to end up in dis-ease, which is disease. So it's so important. Another great form of self-care that people don't talk about a lot is sleep. Sleep is my superpower. Like I'm so grateful that I know how to sleep well. I can sleep easily seven to nine hours a night. And that also really is a great way to show up for people. When you're well rested, you can really show up and be your best self and be of service to people. Well, let's talk about why everybody needs a side hustle. (laughs) I love this question. So yes, People think a lot of business coaches, really famous ones, they say, quit your job, throw every dime you have of savings, max your credit cards, do whatever you can to make your business work, because that's how you're going to make it work. And that to me is a very stressful way to start a business. If you start a business knowing that if this business doesn't work, I'm in credit card debt, I have no savings, and I have to start over with nothing. That is very stressful. I did that once. You know, I I started a business after college and I like literally sold my jewelry at the pawn shop. I put everything into it and it wasn't a very pleasant experience and it, it didn't succeed ultimately. So I've learned this the hard way. Now I teach my clients, keep your job. That will keep you confident. You won't be desperate. You won't be looking at your customer going, oh my God, if they don't buy this product, I won't have my rent. And you actually get to be in business because you have something you believe in, a product, a good, a service that can help people. And people will be a lot more attracted to do business with you when they can sense that you really care about them, that you want to be of service and that you want to help them rather than that fear, that desperation, like, oh my God, you've got to buy or I can't pay my bills. So when you have a side hustle, You get to just do your business for fun. And then when the business, the side hustle starts making enough money that you feel comfortable quitting your job, then you quit and it's a much smoother transition. And I also have a great gift for your guests. I have five simple shifts 
mental, emotional shifts that you need to start your six figure side hustle. So we'll make sure to give that to your guests as well. Absolutely. Working on a couple of side hustle things right now. So I'm glad that you, you touched on that topic. What is, what are your side hustles? Well, I'm a, a hip hop artist on the side and I'm also working on getting relicensed because I was licensed 20 years ago for vending so I can get me vending route, nice little vending route. Like vending machines? Absolutely. Great. See, I am a huge believer in multiple income streams. Most people think you just have one job. That's it. Work nine to five, retire at age 65 with a gold watch and a pension plan. Well, what happens when that job, you know, gets cut? A lot of people lost their jobs due to COVID. If you have multiple income streams, you have a lot more stability. A lot of success coaches, you say you should have seven multiple income streams. That's a lot. Why not start with two or three? You know, have your job, have your have one or two side hustles. And, you know, that's that's something great. You can do affiliate marketing. You can use your social media to, you know, do affiliate marketing and make passive income. I love the vending machine is passive. Once you set up the vending machine, it's good to go. Passive income is so important because we only have so many hours in a day and so many days in a week. And if we have some passive income set up, then we can maximize our earning potential. We most certainly can. And l- let's talk about your definition of an elegant warrior. Yes, I love elegant warriors because they're my they're my avatar. So elegant is what I've been talking about. Things flow, things magnetize. You don't stress out or, you know, make yourself desperate to do business, to have relationships. You are in your power. You're in the flow. You're being elegant. So the elegance is feminine. Femininity is attracting things to you, being magnetic. But warrior is the masculine, going out, conquering, slaying, killing it. So I want the women I coach to be both. I want them to be elegant and a warrior, meaning they go for their goals and dreams. They will overcome obstacles. They will keep going. They'll be persistent and resilient until they reach what they're trying to accomplish. And it's a nice paradigm of elegance, femininity, and warrior masculinity. And I think that everybody needs both men and women. You can't just always be in your masculine, push, 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 grind, 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 or you're going to burn out. And you can't always be in your feminine, which is just, you know, like I said, sitting at home on your couch, like wanting the world to show up at your door. I believe in a nice combination of flow, being at ease, having peace in your life, but also going out there and reaching for your goals and dreams. Well, tell us about your podcast and what listeners can expect when they listen to it. Sure. So my podcast is called the Balanced, Beautiful and Abundant Show. And it was just picked up by Bold Brave TV as a live talk show. It is, if you want to catch it live, Thursdays at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. But if you just want to catch up on some recordings, there's over 100 episodes and they're on all major uh podcast platforms. They are on Spotify. They are on Apple podcasts, Pandora, Amazon, all the places where you can catch podcasts. So the podcast is a lot of my philosophy of the seven pillars. So I interview experts in spirituality, in fitness, in romance, in socializing, in financial abundance. And I interview them and they give my listeners tips, tools, and strategies on how to get to a level 10 in those areas. The point of the podcast, the whole goal is we're taking you from burned out, overwhelmed, drained, jaded, cynical about life to balance beautiful and abundant. And I know that people who are listening are getting a lot of value out of it. And I would, you know, love for you guys to check it out. You'll have a lot of fun with it. Life coach of the year. Tell us about that award and and how that made you feel to get an award like that. Oh my God. It felt amazing because working at home since COVID, I'm working on zoom and, you know, doing lives on my cell phone. And sometimes, you know, I don't get the feedback. I don't get the likes or the hearts, or, you know, sometimes I'll be doing a Facebook live or a podcast and I don't get that instant reaction. And I feel like 
I'm just talking to myself and it's like, I want so badly to help people and empower people and be of service, but then I don't get any feedback. I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing? Like what, you know, I second guess myself. Like maybe I shouldn't have tried, you know, doing this pivot and becoming a life coach. And maybe I am doing the wrong thing. And then when I got the call that I was voted life coach of the year by international association of top professionals, it kind of made me feel Curtis, like, wow, someone is hearing me. Someone is being impacted by my message. All these hours of content on podcasts and lives and posting and all that stuff. It's not in vain. And now I think that even if I just reach one person with, with each podcast or each talk show, just one person that makes it worth it. And the International Association of Top Professionals awarding me is such a huge honor. And I kind of like thought I was just, like I said, not even doing well. And then they say I'm the best life coach of the year. So uh, there's going to be a huge gala at the Bellagio Hotel in Las Vegas. And it's going to be great because, you know, when you work so hard at something and you put your just blood, sweat and tears and everything into it, it feels so great to celebrate the wins. And if you're listening, maybe you didn't get an award like life coach of the year, but there's wins in your life that you can celebrate. Like, even if you just worked out twice this week and you didn't work out the week before, even if you drank more water, even if you returned an email, whatever it is that you were challenged to do, if you did it, you can celebrate the wins. Do you have any current or upcoming projects that you're working on that people need to know about? Yes. I, when is this podcast going to come out? Because I have an event this Sunday. It's, co- it's going to be coming out here in a couple of weeks. Oh, a couple of weeks. All right. Well, every month I do a free workshop and it is just to give back. There's no strings attached. I do a free workshop on a different topic. A lot of them have to do with the seven pillars of abundance And I also offer a free breakthrough call. So it's a 45 minute call, no strings attached. My commitment is to help people get a breakthrough in that 45 minutes. So if they're feeling stuck, maybe they're feeling stuck in their health. Maybe they can't lose that last 15 pounds. Maybe they're feeling stuck in their finances and they're in a dead end job. And they know that the company is struggling because we're going into a recession and they know they need to get out, but they don't know how to start their side hustle or maybe they're stuck in a toxic relationship, or they don't know how to have a relationship. Maybe they're single and they're sick of being single. Whatever area they feel stuck in, in that free 45-minute breakthrough call, I'm committed to getting them unstuck and helping them to have a breakthrough. So in the show notes, we'll be sure to put a link. Actually, if you just go to my link tree, it'll have a lot of the things that I talked about and you can find the podcast, find the live talk show and get on my schedule for the breakthrough call. Well, that was going to be my next question to throw out your contact information so people can stay connected with the life coach of the year. Thank you. So I am on Instagram at Rebecca E. Whitman, Twitter at Rebecca E. Whitman, Clubhouse at Rebecca E. Whitman, R-E-B-E-C-C-A-E-W-H-I-T-M-A-N. And you can go to my website, RebeccaElizabethWhitman.com. And on my website, it also has my email address. So if you guys have any questions, if you want any support in anything, feel free to email or send me a DM. And I just want to help as many people as I can go from burned out, drained, exhausted to balanced, beautiful, and abundant. So if you're feeling any of that, I am here to lift you up and inspire you to get out of that rut and to go to the next level. Well, close us out with some final thoughts, maybe something that I didn't touch on that you want to talk about or just any final thoughts you have for the listeners. Yeah. My final thought is to find the joy in your day. I used to be someone, Curtis, that was either depressed, thinking about the past, beating myself up. I would have, could have, should have. Why didn't I do it this way? Or anxious about the future. Well, what's going to happen? And how am I going to do this? And what what if this? And what if that? And instead of being depressed or anxious, when I learn how to put my focus on today, I can find joy in today and find the joy in the simple things, a good meal, a nice walk. The fact that you woke up, the fact that you, you know, have a friend or have a pet or have a lover, whatever it is, find the joy in the very, very simple things of your day. 
Because when we think of projects that are so big, it's like, oh my God, how am I ever going to do this? And how am I ever going to do that? How am I ever going to write that book or meet my soulmate or, you know, pay off that bill? It's very overwhelming. But if we find the simple joy in the day, we can be happy. And why is it that we want, you know, the house, the relationship, the perfect body? Because we want to be happy, but we're putting our happiness out in front of us when we can find our happiness today. And that is what I encourage your listeners to do. Find your happiness in the simple joys of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, Rebecca Elizabeth Whitman.com. Be sure to check out her website. Get on, get on the call with her. Share this episode to as many people as possible. Also, be sure to follow, rate, and review. Rebecca, I would like to thank you so much for joining me today and gracing us with your presence. Curtis, thank you so much for having me on my podcast. It was such a pleasure to be here. And I really look forward to connecting with your community. And you have a great show. I'm excited to start listening to it. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.